Okay, so. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> this little clip is, or us that sucks, but really how bad does it suck? And I don't know where we're gonna go, how we're gonna end up with this. So far it sucks. I think there's a reason <laughs> <Cars. laughs> that this place is like the one place that all urban planners just agree to hate. Hey everybody, Michael Koval Anderson here, urban designer, author, and host of the TV documentary series about urbanism, The Life Size City. This is the YouTube channel for the series. Today I am going to hang around in my own city of Copenhagen. Or am I? That is one of the questions. Will I be in Copenhagen or not? I'm going to explore the urban development to the south of the city called Ørsted. In English, I guess that would just be Ørsted. Politicians and developers, ooh, they've been trying to get their fingers on this part of Copenhagen since the 1950s. And that is what Ørsted has actually ended up looking like today. I wrote an article recently about how most of the modern urban development we see in Copenhagen really is just regurgitated ideas from the 1950s and 1960s, last century. Old wine in new bottles. I'm linking to that down in the description if you want to have a look. I've covered Ørsted before, not least in the season two episode of The Life Size City filmed here in Copenhagen, but I'm not quite finished with it yet. I decided to enlist some help for this one. One of the things that I learned when I was a CEO was that a good boss surrounds themselves with people who are better and smarter. And I have certainly applied that philosophy today because it also applies to friends and colleagues. I've known Anna Katrina for 10 years and every time we've met in all that time, we end up in a passionate discussion about all things urban. And every time I walk away from one of those discussions, I realize that I've learned something. Often, several different things. What more can you want in a friend and a colleague? Let's hit it. All right, so we, here we are. We're in this... Well, not in it, are we? <laughs> I, I think we are actually in the middle. We're in it. the middle yeah. of Ørsted. This is Ørsted North. Uh -huh. And this is, I guess, also west or south. But there was so much promise when this was uh, planned back in the late 90s, started building in the uh, early 2000s. It was like, we're going to redefine urban development, man. The benchmark city, Copenhagen. Ooh. You have a feeling the buildings are right there, but it will take you like half an hour to bike out there and it's always windy. Yeah, it is windy. That's why the camera's doing this, because it's on my bike. The wind keeps blowing the bike. Before we go and have a look at it out, out there, <laughs> um, what is wrong with it? I know that in universities already, uh, even like, you know, just a couple of decades, they're already learning, yeah, never do that. That is really bad. Here's a bad example here in Denmark, but also in other countries, Ørsted is not something that you should do. I think what's the main point uh, is that we wanted to have like this new urban area with lots of life. And you created these, these long lines and you uh, had a shopping mall as one of the first things you made. So I think you kind of sucked out all the opportunities for life even before you had the chance to create life. I heard that one of the guys who was really heavily involved in the development of it and pushed for it, uh, he envisioned Barcelona. He went down there maybe for a weekend and drank some wine somewhere and he <laughs> saw the boulevards of Barcelona and he said, oh yeah, let's do that in <laughs> Copenhagen. Like, I mean, is it, do you feel like you're in Barcelona here or when we get down there? No, and I also heard people calling it like uh, Copenhagen's Manhattan and we're not even close. Manhattan? Manhattan, oh my God. yeah. All right. So, the sound really sucks here because there's so many cars and not a lot of bikes. Um, so we're going to move into the void. You ready? Let's do it. All right, cool. No, now we're in downtown Ørsted, is that right? We are... You just know so much more about Ørsted than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry that you have that in your head. <laughs> exactly. But I think this is uh, actually what we call the intersection of Scandinavia or someone. Somebody the intersection that. of Scandinavia. Yep, because wow. you have renewal trains, you have the metro, but you also have the highway uh, just below. Yeah, that goes to right Sweden, on. right? Yep. Okay, yeah, yep. and that's where the Swedes go shopping at the big shopping mall. <laughs> exactly. So that's where all the life, the urban life, is supposed to like explode. I guess oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. How's that working out for them? Urban life exploding. Uh, I think we have to realize that creating a shopping mall just really sucks out all opportunities of life. So it's very hard for cafes and shops to actually survive outside of this fields. Yeah, and there's a cafe behind us here uh -huh. and I went, ooh, cafe! Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I mean, like really, that's like a, a really new thing. I, you don't notice a lot of uh, just things that you 
will take for granted in, in the neighborhoods that we live in. Actually, the only kind of like commercial uh, purposes is real estate, real estate shops. I don't know what yeah. you call it. But yeah, okay, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, where so you go, go in to buy a house. And exactly. Stuff, yeah. I saw a new Mercedes uh, dealership along the way as well. Wow. So both you and I live in a traditional neighborhood with, a, I think, a population density of about 12,000 people mm-hmm. per square kilometer. But I mean, when you come out here, where do you, does it feel like Copenhagen to you? Uh, not at all. I, I mean, I, I feel like I'm in some foreign country. and But I don't necessarily think that is bad. And I also think, I remember when we when we shot uh, Lysa City and your crew, they were like, is this really the worst? of Copenhagen yeah. and I looked at it and I said yeah it's kind of bad but then I realized okay there's a lot of people living out here actually and a lot of people who actually like it mm-hmm. so you will also see neighborhoods with people living there but it's something completely different but isn't it really I mean for me when I'm out here so like to answer my own questions it really mm-hmm. feels like America except there's really good bicycle infrastructure <laughs> which yeah. uh, you have to do in Denmark right I mean uh, but like for me it's like the, the, the lane widths for cars are super wide when I was riding my bike down there, it's a 60 kilometer an hour zone, which you just, just doesn't exist, you know, in the inner city, right? Absolutely. Um, so for me, it feels like America, like not just shopping mall, the cliche, but, mm-hmm. you know, just, just the urban design and, and the, maybe the lack of urban fabric. I mean, exactly. I don't... How, how could this happen? What do you I, think? I mean, but I think... So, so first of all, we need to remember that this was founded in, like, the 90s. The whole idea of creating a new, like, vibrant city was founded in the 90s, where Copenhagen was completely different to what we know today. So so I think the whole idea you said, like, oh, they wanted to, it, it, to look like Barcelona or Manhattan. So that's their reference. Copenhagen was different. Mm-hmm. But they, they did know already by then, okay, we want to make a place where people... Are take the bike and public transport and the car has to play like a smaller role so it's hard to find car parking out here it's more expensive and they have the opportunities of public transport and you can bike but as you say like you make really wide streets you make it like fast lanes it doesn't feel like a place that you want to bike or go for a walk like I even took the metro from one place to another because walking here would be like like not even something I would think of yeah yeah Urista is a place that they learn in schools, uh, in universities, that it's a bad thing to do, right? Yeah. Um, but why? I mean, for me, it's, I mean, I always wondered about the density out here compared mm-hmm. to what we have been used to for centuries in the center mm-hmm. of Copenhagen and all over the world. Density is yeah, the big yeah. D and everybody's trying to desperately get density back into their cities. Yeah. Um, like for here, it just seems like they dropped the ball. They just thought, oh, it's so spread out and the fancy architects have buildings that are really spread Mm -hmm. out i mean for me that's where they they screwed up i think what else do you think they did wrong out here you know professionally i I think they really had this idea of looking at a plan on a drawing and and it looked really nice with small canals and you know it looked really nice in a drawing and they forgot the like human scale that's that's one thing so when they actually build it they realized that it's not really nice so, but again, with that said, like building a completely new neighborhood is really difficult, mm-hmm. uh, and I and I think they got it right putting public transport out there first. Yeah. But uh, I, I think they were just too much in love with the, how it looked on a, on a drawing from like the helicopter view. From the right? helicopter yeah. view, yeah, absolutely. But I have I have a photo from a helicopter. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it, it just looks like this huge. It's a rectangle, like it, yeah. a rectangle, like monstrosity in the middle of uh, you know the the protected wetlands it just sort of like looks completely out of place and I can kind of see what you mean right on if that's the classic problem is it looks great yeah. on paper 20 kilometers away but it just doesn't look nice from the air it really looks like it's out of place it, it looks completely out of place but I think it's actually one of the things that people who live here love because you have like this dense I wouldn't call it like dense city like but you have high-rise buildings and then right next to it you have wetlands, you have like sheep and cows and a complete uh, different picture. And it's actually quite close to the inner city. Yeah. You just have a feeling you're another planet. When, when, when we met up at the top and, and yeah. you took the metro and I rode my bike, Oh my god. I tried to look for you. I know. And I, I eventually I saw you and you looked like really devastated like oh. I was thinking like I was keeping an eye on Metro like the train scene. I wonder and then I just forgot about it because it was yeah. just so boring. <laughs> yeah, so I used, I used to work out here and oh. 
really I could take my bike it was like no big deal it was like five kilometers really easy but I always took the metro because I had a kind of a bicycle depression yeah I kind of tend to forget it when I'm in the city because you know you look at things and it's yeah. just a nice fast way of walking but this was like going to the gym yeah parts of the nature out here is just really like you know they try to make it really nice and again it looks like something on a picture yeah but then you also have like this wild nature kind of it's it's really confusing for me yeah okay so i think they screwed up on density uh mm -hmm. they're trying to fix that like the financial crisis came along and mm -hmm. sort of slowed everything down mm -hmm. so they kind of went back to the drawing board as i understand and said okay let's yes. maybe try and bit a bit yeah. build a bit more dense but i don't really see the effect of that yet there's more hotels and stuff out mm -hmm. here but so density, yeah, and then uh, you're like you mentioned uh, induced demand. You know, you create wide streets, the fast yes. streets for cars. Even though the parking prices are high out here, people are still going to go. Damn, it's quick. Yeah. It's like it's literally ten minutes for me, and it's twenty on the metro. I'm going to mm. drive, right? Mm. So what else? I mean, you can find really cool architecture out here. Bjarke Ingels created different buildings, and and you would have people going out here just to look at the architecture. But it's it's like it's not really. Uh, connected to the surroundings so you have like one nice building and then a couple of ugly buildings and one nice building but you don't feel like walking around them so again it, you can make it look, it look really nice in a picture yeah so it's world-class architecture some of it and still you feel like okay this is not really the kind of quality we're known for in Copenhagen it just seems like it was a showpiece right like it's like oh mm. we're gonna create a brand new development and mm outrageous amount of money spent on it and a metro and bike lanes that's fine but mm -hmm. it's sort of like you know giving mm -hmm. the star architects all of their a big yep. plot of land yep. without uh without really thinking about the design so that when we're on the metro riding past oh that was that beautiful uh, VM yeah. building oh there's the you know, john nouvelle and whatever right absolutely I, I think i think actually they did put a lot of thought into it but they did the competition they had a lot of thoughts about it and 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 making the star architects come here was definitely a plan so they did have all these thoughts but i think i think that there was so much experience they didn't have yet yeah we haven't been creating new urban uh, areas for i don't know how long <laughs> really <laughs> this it was like so much space you can walk on here. I'm, walk, I'm watching them come and I'm thinking, okay, okay, it doesn't matter for the shot if they walk that way. Oh, they can actually walk around the bike and then, okay. Okay, <laughs> okay but what I was saying was that, you know, I, they did have a plan. They had a plan to make, like Copenhagen was just nothing back in the 90s. Like everyone left it. Yeah. It was like close to bankrupt. So they had to like turn it all upside down and they had to be brave, they had to create something new and very international. And I think that's what they did. Mm. And also uh, making the star architects come and do something that was really fancy. And they had a plan. Now, but the funny thing is like when you, you know, all the tours and, and as well, you and international guests and you know, people coming to Copenhagen, mm. they come out here, yeah, fair enough. Some of them will say, this is you know, not as bad as it gets no. compared to where I'm from, but mm. they're coming here, they're going, why did you do that? And yeah. Let's go have a glass of wine, but in that traditional neighborhood. You know, like, you know, like they, they want to go into the city center of Copenhagen. You don't right? want to have a glass of wine out here. No, I know. But, yeah. that's, like, but international guests, professional yeah, guests that yeah, I yeah, take yeah. on bike rides around town, yeah. they're going like, really? Yeah. What did you do here? Mm. Like, well, who, who was behind this? So it's kind of the, this amazement from them that mm. this is actually something mm. Copenhagen would build. Absolutely. And, um, and I also think, like, oh, it's fine for me that you made it. It feels you have this suburban American feeling out here where there's no purpose, there's no glass of wine. And I think that's fine. And you have the nature next to it, which is, I mean, very unique. But I think what's the big problem is that you had this idea that you wanted to create urban life. You had this idea that you wanted to be sustainable and, you know, I don't know, like a, a machine of urban life. I don't know. Mm. So, so it's quite the contrary. So they sort of just said at the beginning, hey, we're going to create an American suburb from the 1950s, <laughs> but with some metro and some bike lanes, and that's our goal, and we succeeded. They should have just been honest at the beginning, or yeah. they, instead of like pretending that they're going to do something for I, urban I, life. I think they had this uh, imagination that it would be easier to create urban life, uh, or an imagination that now, like Copenhagen was really worn out, and they said, like, we're going to create like this new nice place and new buildings, 
crazy international architecture, I think they had an idea this is gonna sell itself, and it didn't. No, on my social media feeds, on my Instagram ads, it is nothing but, hey, an apartment out in Urstedt, or an apartment mm. out in the other developments mm. of, of, of Suhoun, South yeah. Harbor, mm. uh, North Harbor. It, like, they're constantly selling me apartments, and I'm thinking, like, it's been here 20 years, haven't they sold the apartments yet? Kampeng is still popular, so, so you will have people who move out here, but for different reasons than they would move to Copenhagen. You have people who want to live close to the city, but but not in a city. They want... Oh, that's a baby, sorry. That's a baby. <laughs> and cut for the baby. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, Kama. Hi, Kama. Hi. <laughs> so I think actually, you know, when you get a kid, I, I think the earth will kind of start to get more appealing because there's not really much noise out here apart from all the cars <laughs> yeah. and there are trucks in the metro but yeah. I mean you don't have like you know people having a party in your backyard and you don't have like a nightclub next door yeah yeah so now I mean you you said something to me a while back like you know like let's you know, we can stand here and, and talk about why it's failed and mm -hmm. why people are, are now accepting that it's failed mm -hmm. um, and how it's the bad example of how to do things but you I mean you said you know people live out here and they like it yeah I mean I mean do you know them? <laughs> I know them. They're in my Facebook feed, and um, and I and you know, like take a look at uh, Instagram, and you put a hashtag on Ursel and get really pretty shots, like really pretty photos from here. And I think people really like this idea of being in a like urban kind of area, mm -hmm. and then have this nature contrast yeah. next to it. So, so you feel isolated maybe from the city, if that's your thing, because that yeah. is a thing for people. But yeah. then you're actually just a, a short hop into the city. Yeah, right? I, and I, I think that has a certain kind of appeal. And I also think we should move on from criticizing the ideas they had back in the 90s, which were horrible, and they never, or maybe they were good, but they never turned out to be anything good. Yeah and say what's like the next step maybe we should be serious about this density we make create new islands in Copenhagen mm. to get enough urban development uh, areas yeah. why don't they make this more dense why don't they use all this space we already have out here yeah. um, you'll still have a super boring uh, quiet area right. <laughs> anyway but I mean now this has been here for 20 years and it keeps just getting not well not getting worse you know mm -hmm. but like still just being bad mm. um, steady badness <laughs> right there yeah yeah but, yeah but how i mean we're not really learning from it in copenhagen because there's carlsberg city there is a uh, uh, norhau north mm -hmm. harbor that's coming still mm -hmm. um and looking at the plans for what they're doing it doesn't seem like they're going oh my god we failed so mm -hmm. miserably in urstad because <laughs> it's the same uh developers it's the same organization from mm -hmm. the city it's all the same people who are like la 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 we didn't screw up in Erstead and we're and they're gonna they're, it's like they're just continuing it or what do, am I right or um, wrong? I don't know. well in, in in some ways I would say uh, in some ways because you have like super super boring architecture in some of these new areas mm. really cheap architecture it's gonna last for like 30 years and then it's hopelessly <laughs> outdated um, but there's also good things like even you know Norhaun and, and Carlsberg they're really focused on creating urban life so they demand that you have cafes and uh, shops at the uh, ground floor mm -hmm. and um, and they're really focused on what kind of life you have so so I don't think they completely uh, create the same mistakes okay apart from the fact like why does new architecture have to be so super boring yeah. like it's it's like just squares yeah. with small bal big oh, balconies yeah. on it and brown there's a lot of brown buildings like it's, it's, it's like ups has sponsored all the architecture absolutely it's like 50 shades of brown yeah, it's like right, 50 right. shades of poo yeah 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 <laughs> No, so, but, but no, no, it's an interesting point. Never thought about that. Like, there is actually, in the beginning of these developments in Carlsberg, they've focused on, you know, getting some urban fabric, getting people to hang out absolutely. there and, and make it yeah. a destination. Yes, right? yeah. yes. And, yeah. and, yeah, I could criticize uh, the fact that they're still creating a lot of um, car parking and why are they not more visionary about those things. But still, you don't have a feeling when you walk inside of Carlsberg, you don't have this feeling that you have out here with, like, being on a highway. Yeah. You, you have a feeling that you, they're trying to like turn that idea upside down in terms of traffic by foot and traffic by car. Now, I mean, so. with one thing I was no looking at the other day about Norhaun, mm -hmm. North Harbor, um, 
you know, they're talking about the area, right? The, mm. And uh, it's six times larger than inner Ustapol, right? Mm. And, but it's going to be the same amount of people living there. So there's 45,000 people in the traditional neighborhood yeah, yeah, right yeah. next to it. Yeah. And there's going to be 40,000 people, but in six, on six times the space. Yeah. So that, that whole, I'm just getting kind of more and more irritated <laughs> about density because the yeah. city's talking a lot about it, right? Like, yeah. oh, we're, gonna, we're growing, we're growing, we're growing. We're going to build islands all the way. We're going to we're gonna pave over the ocean to Sweden. Yeah, I mean, exactly. So I, it's just kind of weird that we're, we kind of dropped that density ball. That's just my thing at the moment. And, so, and yet, uh, Carlsberg is particularly is criticized for being very, I don't know, dense, but at least the buildings are very close. So you have very narrow streets and it's very hard to get the sunlight. So there's definitely something about how we build uh that is very challenging right yeah. now yeah all right so we need a coffee and there's one cafe uh so maybe uh we, we could we could definitely go to the shopping mall i no, think there, that's like is really it, off like a, that's <laughs> off brand for me to go to a shopping <laughs> yes, mall my god absolutely no oh my god anyway cool uh, i mean but i mean so yeah the title right or that sucks how bad does it suck how bad does it suck uh, I, I well, I still think it really, really sucks. But I actually, I, I have to say, they're trying to make it better. They're trying to learn from it, but they're also trying to take whatever's out here mm -hmm. and get something out of it, make it better. Yeah, and people love to live out here. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, and that's cool. Yeah. I mean, and respect for that, right? Yeah. They don't have to like live where we live. You know? exactly. I mean, it is. I totally respect the, the fact mm -hmm. that people like to live out here. I just think we could have done it better. But yeah, I saw between two buildings, two of the star architecty buildings, they put like a, a, some urban hall. I yeah. think it's skating, a skateboarding yeah, 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 or yeah. something. So it's like, well, they filled in that little <laughs> gap that's been irritating me for 20 years, yes. right? Okay, they're trying to like, well, they have space to add anyway, right? Yes. They can squeeze stuff in and make a better urban fabric, right? Exactly. And they can use it as a test site for upcycling. I know there's some great upcycled buildings out here great architecture where they try to reuse all the materials so i think it's it's actually a good place for experimenting a little bit and i think it should do it far more mm -hmm. i mean they have it's the foundation for creating anything out here is shit yeah. so why not use it as a complete experiment right yeah that'd be great yeah and then, but then they have whole know-how which is just empty right it's still yep. coming so i mean yep. i'm thinking man there's potential just yep. to make like the world's most sustainable neighborhood everything that we know to be right yep. is included there but it's still real estate yeah. you know developers yeah. who are di dictating the market right okay this Absolutely. is where I'm, I'm babbling now i'm getting pissed off so. yeah. <laughs> all right let's uh, let's go let's get out of the wind ooh, ooh, ooh. yeah yep. <laughs> thanks for being there comma beautiful love your work all right way for the future boom <laughs> well there you have it if you enjoyed this video, please give us a like on that little button down there and subscribe to the channel as well. we got lots of cool stuff going on and we're going to continue making it. That's it for me today. Michael Kovalanderson is out. See you next time.